internal medicine specialist, Dr. Nelson Aluya, joins us now from New Jersey. Dr. Aluya, welcome to the program. Well, thank you for having me once again. It's a pleasure. Of course. So this is a grim milestone indeed. How are you processing the rising numbers compared to how the United States has handled the coronavirus pandemic? Well, it's, it's disheartening uh, that uh, this is a milestone that uh, is being marked. Unfortunately, it's uh, something not, uh, that is not something we wish for. But again, this is where we are. The pandemic is here. Uh, it's real. And uh, we just have to accept it. But the essence is for us to you know, take uh, intentional and purposeful steps to stem uh, the further um, death that's been taking place and uh, uh, with the following or ensuing economic uh, and social and political uh, consequences. So it's, it's really sad uh, that we're here at this stage because about a year ago, life here was just normal and everybody was going about their usual business. And now, 500,000 uh, people dead. And it's a shame uh, that the, you know, Dr. Fauci and his group said in another couple of months, we'll expect 100,000 you know, deaths in, in, a few, uh, in a few months. Yeah, well, President, Bi President Biden did hold a candlelight vigil last night, and he has described um, these Americans who have died from the horrible disease as extraordinary Americans, spanning generations. And yet, you still find people skeptical about the virus, annoyed that they have to observe restrictions, which are there for their own good. So how do you convince people about the seriousness of the situation? Well, first, I must commend uh, President Biden. It shows leadership, and that's what leadership is all about. Uh, creating the empathy uh, for the people who you lead and showing that you're standing for them and you, you're helping to allay their fears and you recognize the pain that they're going through. Uh, and that's one uh, for, for, for what he's done. Um, I, I mean, again, with the issue of convincing people that the pandemic is here, look, the virus has been here for a year now plus. Uh, I don't know what else that people are still waiting for uh, to make them understand that it's real and it kills. Because here in the United States, uh, some you know, uh, gentleman had said, there's hardly anybody here in the United States who don't know somebody who have a family member uh, who hasn't died from or gotten sick from uh, COVID-19. So it's real, uh, but then you always have skeptics. But then the work that we have to do, especially those in the medical field, is to help convince them. Uh, like I always say, if you make somebody understand, they will accept it. So we have to work harder to make them understand that it's real and it kills. Well, speaking of convincing people, what are your thoughts on the vaccination campaigns across the country, especially as the country still has a crisis on its hands, especially in Texas? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's ongoing. Uh, they've been taking bold and uh, decisive and uh, impressive steps to ensure that uh, the vaccine is rolled out and more people get it. Uh, I, as, a, as a physician, I get patients who are asking me now that they need to get it because a lot, a lot of people are getting you know, better convinced. Uh, however, nature has its own turn. Uh, we see what happened with the, um, the cold storm, uh, the snow that happened in Texas, which you know, hasn't happened in over 30 years, is the climate change. And uh, what we're suffering here uh, in the Northeast as well, with the cold chill, chill blame. So uh, that has dampened um, the the rollout uh, on the vaccines that uh, that this administration put out, but you know uh, it's, it's it's something we have to do uh, because unless uh, this is done, like I always say, uh, everybody will get this virus one way or the other. You either get it in the wild, meaning off in the street for somebody, or you get it by vaccine. Which one do you have to choose? And that's where where we have to. But you know, as physicians, we have to do the work and show that the you know everybody gets it so that we achieve the herd immunity that we're talking about, so that the risk of having new strains coming from those who didn't get it uh, will be less so we can save lives and livelihoods. All right, well, thanks again, Dr. Leah, for joining us, and please do stay safe out there. I will, thank you, it's a pleasure.